Fuck some mud. Randy Valleys is the chief mate of the U.S. Army Dredge Wheeler, the largest and most sophisticated dredge ship in the U.S. It's on the job in the southwest pass of the Mississippi, the channel for ocean-going ships between the Gulf of Mexico and deep sea ports in Louisiana. The Wheeler has three large drag arms that are lowered to suction deposits from the river bottom. The mission, to maintain a 45-foot deep channel for deep water ships. Second mate Joel Fritch operates the arms from the bridge. Well, my job down here is to watch the angles on the wire so we don't, the ship, you know, is constantly working with, with currents and forces. We want to make sure if the ship starts sliding one way, we're not going to ride over our wires and damage the drag arms. He has to deal not only with the flow of the water, but with the contours of the river bottom. The drag arms are able to go up and down like a shock absorber. Uh, that way, if it goes from 47 feet to 49 feet, and uh, the, that way the drag it just won't, it won't uh, slam good, it slam really hard on the wires, it's kind of a shock absorber. The wheeler moves at under one nautical mile per hour when it's dredging. It's a hopper dredge and basically vacuums all the sediment into its massive hole. Captain Ed Morehouse has been working on the wheeler since it was commissioned in 1981. Here we're moving approximately 30,000 cubic yards of material a day. Our record are the areas where the dump site is, is right next to the dredging site. Uh, we can move over 100,000 cubic yards a day of material. Underneath those catwalks, that's just over the very top of the hopper. If you were to take the catwalks and all the equipment you see in the way off of there, it would be 46 feet deep and 60 feet wide of a wide open dumping bay. The water that you're seeing in there now, that's 46 feet deep. Uh, it's actually the slurry. Up on top is the water, and about maybe uh, two-thirds of the way down is the actual material, which is the very fine, heavy sand. In the upper Mississippi, fall is the main dredging season. In the lower river and the delta, there's dredging all year. We do about 40 percent of the dredging for the entire U.S. Army Corps engineers. We do that using a variety of uh, techniques. Uh, we do it in partnership with the commercial dredging industry, uh, the navigation industry, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, and the state of Louisiana. The Corps of Engineers New Orleans District Headquarters overlooks the big money. New Orleans ranks as only the fifth largest port in the country, but it's in the middle of perhaps the busiest stretch of waterway in the world. Bigger than Rotterdam, Singapore, Shanghai, any of the largest ports that you can think of. 475 million tons a year. Over 6,000 ships come in and over 6,000 ships go out annually and over 500,000 barge movements occur. So you can imagine just how huge that is. At New Orleans, the average flow of the Mississippi is 600,000 cubic feet per second. That's about four and a half million gallons. Besides carrying all that commercial traffic, the river brings along millions of tons of silt and sand and it's always trying to change its course, find an easier route to the Gulf. Over 40% of the water that you know, lands in the, the continental U.S. comes down the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, transported with that water is sediment. Uh, Mother Nature, how she intended to operate was that sediment would go down the Mississippi River and be deposited, uh, creating marshlands and wetlands. And eventually we get to the point where you, know, you couldn't navigate up the Mississippi River. Well, nature provides obstacles for commerce. And this is one of the issues that we have to deal with in the river is that the river always deposits material in the channel. And we have an obligation to maintain a navigable waterway. The Corps is constantly monitoring the channel bottom and the volume of water flow upstream. We watch the gauges upriver, which is Cairo and that area and project managers do the same thing that uh, so was passed. Uh, they watch it and you watch the rise and how long it is predicted to stay up. The Corps also watches for hurricanes. They'll certainly shut down work when they pass, but most of them have minimal effect on the shipping channel. Katrina, with all its devastation, shut down the port and ravaged the delta and left the river alone. The channel actually reopened three days after the hurricane. The port reopened 13 days after the hurricane. 
And, and that in itself was just mind-boggling and amazing. Katrina, we expected major problems with the channel, and we got virtually none. The river maintained itself. A lot of that is because of the way the, the river is diked and levied. So there was a lot of building damage, but the actual river dynamics itself held. But hurricanes, among other factors, have been eating away at the Mississippi Delta itself. Contract dredges like the E.W. Ellison can help rebuild the wetland. It's called a cutter head dredge. Unlike the Wheeler, it has to immediately deposit everything it scrapes and vacuums off the bottom. Here, it's pumping onto the Gulf shore of the Strip, forming the Southwest Pass. A lot of that open water used to be marshland. Since the river is, is uh, levied in and diked in down here, there's no longer the natural uh, replenishment of the marshland. And over the last 100 years, the uh, coast, instead of expanding, has been uh, decreasing. Where this all used to be filled in with land is now wide open. There used to be only these passes, and everything else was, was completely forested and, uh, and had marshland and wetlands. So what the Corps is trying to do is diversions, one diversion area uh, for beneficial use of the, of the natural river material is to cut an exit for the river right here at the, at the, the west side across from Cubitt's Gap, it's a little bit higher actually, and try and start filling back in this intrusion. The Wheeler is a full-blown ocean-going ship with staterooms, offices, a small workout room, a full mess, and food storage for extended trips. In the aftermath of Katrina, it served as a hotel for construction workers in New Orleans. It can be deployed to the East Coast or even overseas, and it's got a lot of specialized dredging equipment. There's more on here than, than it would be on any normal ship, even a tanker. A tanker has their, their pumps for, for, uh, for their product, but the associated pumps we have with the piping system, for the jetting system and everything else, is just, for a small ship, it's just packed full of machinery. We have a lot of pumps. I mean, huge pumps, you know, small pumps. Uh, our business is pumps. We got two huge inboards, uh, a lot of uh, oversized uh, flushing pumps, uh, gland seal pumps, uh, hydraulic pumps for the skids. Uh, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot. As the pumps fill the hold, the ship operates differently. The dynamics of this vessel is always changing. You start out with an empty ship, and within a half hour to 40 minutes, you're a fully loaded ship and the whole characteristics of the ship handling changes. Once it's full, the wheeler lifts its drag arms and travels to a dump zone, in this case, a site known as Head of Passes. The ship has doors on its bottom and opens them for the sediment to gush out. The wheeler rises about 17 feet in the water during the process. Once complete, it's off to dredge another site. Well, we're a dredge boat. We're mud suckers. That's what we do. Put the drags on the bottom and we try to put the mud in the hopper. And bread on the American table. There's pride in the Corps' key role in keeping the wheels and ships of commerce moving. The Corps of Engineers, to me, is kind of uh, one of the better kept secrets uh, within the United States as far as uh, public service. We don't have lobbyists, we don't advertise, we don't really get the word out as to what we do. We're a response uh, agency, and we're successful if we get the job done that we're tasked to do. I can definitely say that we make a difference, we make an impact every day in uh, the lives of the people in New Orleans, in Louisiana, and the nation. They might not realize it, but we do. The Public Works mission of the Corps of Engineers may not involve many uniformed soldiers, but it's involved in the security of the nation as surely as combat engineers building forward operating bases overseas. I'm Staff Sergeant Brian Buckwalter. Thanks for watching Recon.